Soon after Jesse Owens won four gold medals at the Olympics in Berlin in August 1936, Cleveland threw a parade for its most famous son. 13-year-old Harrison Dillard was among the tens of thousands lining the city's streets to celebrate the man who'd stood up to Hitler. When it got immediately in front of us, that's when he looked down and winked and said, hey, hi kids, how are you? I remember running back after the car passed and you know, Jesse passed. And that's when I burst into the kitchen. Mom, I just saw Jesse. Oh, I'm going to be just like him. At the London Olympics in 1948, Dillard was just like his idol. Just three years removed from combat in Italy in World War II, Dillard won two gold medals, including the 100-meter dash in a photo finish. And you get on that victory stand, and I, I remember vividly standing there, and I could feel hair on the back of my neck just standing up as I stood there. It was a dream come true. But like Owens before him, Dillard returned to the U.S. as both a hero and a second-class citizen. Four years later, at the Olympics in Helsinki in 1952, Dillard won two more gold medals. But in the country for which he was competing, segregation was still a reality. Millions of blacks were disenfranchised from the voting process. Now, all these years later, Dillard, at 85, has lived to see the U.S. elect a black president. I never thought I'd see it. No, I, I thought eventually it, it, it may happen. It may happen, but... Uh... I certainly won't see it. As a celebrated black athlete, Dillard was among a group of pioneers who over the last seven decades were agents of change. Their achievements instilled pride and confidence in black Americans. White Americans came to admire and even respect them. Athletes such as Joe Lewis. It was famously written that Lewis was a credit to his race the human race. When Jolis's fights were on, you could walk down my street, and you didn't have to be near a radio. The radios were blasting from every house. Under the ring, Max playing around him. Joe Lewis left pick with two straight left to the chin. A left to the jaw, a right to the head. And now 86, Rachel Robinson says that, like her husband Jackie, Joe Lewis made an impact beyond the realm of sports. Lewis measured him to the body, a left up to the jaw, and Schmeling is down. The fight is over. Max Schmeling is beaten in one round. Joe Lewis was symbolic of, of everything we felt. He was not only uh, a champion, but he was fighting back, and fighting back can have lots of different meanings. And it's not just fisticuffs. It's somehow standing up, being courageous, being determined, um, knowing that there needs to be change, being committed to being out front. Owens and Lewis had achieved greatness in individual sports. When they were at their peak, blacks were banned from the major leagues in the NFL. The NBA didn't yet exist. But everything changed on April 15, 1947, when Jackie Robinson became the first black player in the major leagues in the 20th century. We would see black fans coming out in large numbers, in unprecedented numbers, and that said something about their hopes and their aspirations and their joy about this. And it sort of began to be a part of what we felt about ourselves, that we had an obligation to them. It had to be an immeasurable um, blow I think, to segregated ways of thinking. Baseball is America's game. Here's a guy that can play our game at the highest level. Something must be good about him, besides the fact that he can throw and catch your baseball. What do you think was the impact in our larger society when Jackie broke the color line? It was widely seen because of, of, of the sports arena and, and fans and, and the coverage that sports gets. Um, so it's not something that you, you did in a back room somewhere and then nobody saw it. It was something that had an effect right in front of you. He gave us a picture of what character and what integrity uh, is supposed to look like. J.C. Watts grew up in segregated Oklahoma in the 1960s. In 1979 and 80, he started at quarterback for the University of Oklahoma. In 1995, he became the first black Republican congressman from south of the Mason-Dixon since Reconstruction. Well, uh, Athletes were a tangible uh, record that the civil rights movement could look to to say that we have made gains, we have made strides. 
In the 1960s, sports stayed in the vanguard of the struggle for equality. But as the civil rights movement was radicalized, the gradual approach favored by Owens, Lewis, and Robinson was rejected by a younger generation demanding immediate change, a generation embodied by Muhammad Ali. You want to keep calling me a white man's name. I'm not white. I don't want to be called after your name no more. I'm not no slave. I'm Muhammad Ali. I think Muhammad Ali represented, I, I think for many, um, you, know, you know, the yes we can of, of, of this day. Why are we mistreated? Why are we in this condition, stripped of our name, our language, our culture, our God, and our religion? Ali, I think, gave young black men the feeling that, hey, I can go out there and achieve, and I can do it. If I'm good enough, I can make it happen, and nobody can stand in my way. But there were still obstacles. Tony Dungy was the starting quarterback at the University of Minnesota in the mid-1970s. But scouts told him he'd have to switch positions to the NFL, which he did. 30 years later, in 2007 with the Colts, he became the first black head coach to win the Super Bowl. What do you consider the importance of what you did? You know, I got a, a uh, call from my daughter, who was a senior at Spelman College then, uh, historically black college, all women, and she told me that uh, a couple of her professors were crying because they said, hey, all the things that we went through, the marches, the different things, trying to fight for progress, to see that happen, it just kind of brought a tear to their eyes. I think uh, the president-elect would tell you that uh, he, he stands on the shoulders of the Jesse Owens and the Joe Lewis's and the Bill Russell's and the Jackie Robinson's. And on uh, the first Tuesday of November uh, 2008, Jeremy, I, I can't tell you how much, but the earth moved. The dream of our founders is alive in our time. You think we get there without sports? Without Jackie Robinson and no, Muhammad Ali? No, I absolutely do not. I, I think that people like that, like Jackie Robinson and Bill Russell, Michael Jordan, have had a tremendous, tremendous impact on our country. Um, that, that we would not be, be there uh, without that. And you? I don't know, I've, I've put myself in that category, but I think I've helped. What were you thinking about your late husband on the night of the election in November? I kind of tipped my hat to Jack in the sense that this is what we have been working for, this is what we wanted, this is what we advocated. I'm sure it would have happened anyway, eventually. But I think that uh, the athletes simply uh, focused attention on it earlier. That's where uh, I think sports played uh, its biggest part.